are drawing a man and I have a Q&A about realistic portraits. And at the end of this video I will tell you what I'm drawing next week. Just in case you want to make a request on the topic of that one, so stay tuned. So, first I want to talk about the different aids or tools for making sure that your sketch is accurate. The ones I can think of off the top of my head is the grid method, which I use the most. There is tracing, measuring distances and angles, and of course you can draw without using any of these methods. Now, there's a lot of controversy on the subject, and I can only give you my own personal opinion. As I said, I often use a grid myself, and the reason for this is that it is faster than simply measuring. Also, my computer is super tiny and my portrait is quite large, so I have to upscale everything, which would be a drag if I were to work completely without using some sort of technique. I would even consider tracing if I had a printer that was big enough. And no, I don't think that it's cheating, because when you have your outlines, then what? Well, that's when the rendering begins and if you don't know how to draw you would still get lost in the details and probably end up with a flat portrait with no variation in your main values. So now that that's out of the way, we move on to the questions. So first question goes, are there any tips you could give on drawing the mouth? I think the most important thing to keep in mind when drawing from reference is to draw what you see. All of us know what the mouth looks like when drawn in an illustrated way, but the reality is often far from that image. There are shapes in the shadows and highlights, and the only hard edges are most likely between the lips and in the corners of the mouth. These are the areas that are easiest to establish in the very beginning, so I always start there. I fill in the shapes gradually, building up layers, and when drawing the mouth and nose, I think of the surrounding areas as a part of it, building it up gradually to make sure the feature sits correctly in the face. Question number two. Is it better to finish one feature completely before moving on to the next, or is it better to do a preliminary sketching of the entire face? Definitely sketch out and make sure that all proportions are correct before going in with your values. Trying to fix something that is off and erasing larger features might get you to lose track of where you are in the drawing. It might mess up your shading later on and erasing dark lines normally leaves marks no matter what you do. You might also end up erasing time and again, eventually damaging your paper. So sketch the whole thing with a light hand before laying down your values. Number three, can you give me some good techniques to shade well? Now, this one is quite huge, so uh, I might make a whole video on that topic in the future. I want to say that you have to consider which effect you want to achieve when shading, because there are times when you want rough shadows and times you want smooth shadows. And oftentimes there are both and you really have to keep an eye on the transitions between the two. When rendering skin there is a huge difference to an old man's face and that of a baby. When drawing soft skin I lay the pencil on the side and hold it loosely at the back trying to distribute the graphite evenly to the paper. I know it seems tedious, but I have found that layering gives me the best result, and for the smoothest results, I use a cloth in between layers. This lifts up a bit of the graphite and removes the fine lines. For a little coarser shading, I use a brush to push the graphite into the paper. I also like using a brush on softer mediums like charcoal. It doesn't remove as much of the charcoal powder as the cloth would. As for using paper stumps, uh, I find that they are great increases and on my darkest areas. Now, 
I'm not the best at wiping off my paper stumps, so they often lay down graphite as well as smooth out the lines. This can be useful, but is important to keep in mind or you might get a surprise. The paper stump also requires some skill when used on larger areas, as it is easy to end up creating streaks. My tip is to clean it, lay it slightly on the side and use a light hand. It's better to go over the area several times than to create streaks in your shading. Question 4. Could you share some techniques on doing hair? When drawing hair you don't actually draw the hair strands, but the shadow in between them. I map out the larger shapes of the hair, layering with graphite pencils, smoothing it out with a brush or a cloth, lifting graphite with an eraser to create an illusion of individual hair strands. Then I go back and forth like that, tweaking my values and contrasts until I'm happy with the result. Thank you so much for your great questions and for all the positive feedback I have gotten on YouTube, Facebook and Instagram. And to those of you who order commissions, you are so great and the reason I find my motivation.
Next week I am drawing a miniature pincher. For requests on topics, leave a comment below and I'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Thank you.